So today we're here with John from Mothership Arrow. And John, tell us a little bit about what Mothership Arrow does and uh, how you guys are using 3D printing. Mothership Aeronautics combines solar panel technology with lighter than air aircraft to create aerially persistent robotic systems or a platform for aerially persistent robotic systems. We're using 3D printing to allow us to have the lightest weight solar panels for aviation. Uh, for example, uh, this one is uh, very long for a 3D printer, and so it's, uh, it's quite a challenge to, to print panels like this, but we figured it out using the, uh, the Mosquito Magnum Hot End. You guys use a lot of 3D printing in designing your, your gondolas. You showed us some of the, the parts that you guys make and how 3D printing helps you reduce part count. Uh, and, and change the design to reduce weight as well over even over something that's made out of carbon fiber. Yeah. Uh, because you've modified the design to be optimized for the 3D printing process. Maybe you can talk about that. With carbon fiber molded parts, uh, you, you have to have a mold. So there's certain things that when you're molding, you are uh, conforming to a surface. Right. And so little details like something you're going to put a screw in, something for mounting, uh, especially when they're more internal features, is very difficult to get with a, a molded carbon fiber shape. Mm -hmm. So normally we need to combine molded carbon fiber with machined aluminum gotcha. and now pultruded carbon fiber tubes. And now all of a sudden you have a lot of elements and each element must be fastened to another element with a screw. Uh, with a 3D printed single part design, we reduce part counts, we don't need the screws in between, and the transitions in the part can, uh, can essentially be smoother, optimized for, for strength in, in what it is. So this shroud, for example, single piece, it has the, the duct for uh, protection of uh, fingers, let's say, for mm -hmm. uh, a blimp that is flying around people. Also, it helps a little bit with noise and uh, aerodynamics. The structure here holds the motor in the center and we've 3D printed a clamp and that's something we we're able to do because we are 3D printing primarily nylon. Mm -hmm. uh, nylon does require higher temperatures than sure. uh, things like PLA and ABS. So that's that's another area that uh, the Mosquito Hot End has been really helpful. The, the heat break mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, is able to print at let's say 270, 275. We've printed at you know even 305 here just to get that speed and that volume because uh, we're printing a lot of volume, a lot of production parts every day. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about how you know the speed of the prints has, has helped you guys maybe improve your process. Well, on the one hand, uh, when when you print something, there is a human has to show up and start the print. Right. Uh, for now. Sure. Uh, but there's a certain level of like the meticulous building and assembly, finger assembly that now the robot does that. So it's okay to leave it going overnight. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the 3D printed parts often are comparable to like a human, a handmade, handcrafted part, but uh, it doesn't require a human. So yeah, you, you pay an amount for a machine. Uh, you pay an amount to maintain a machine and hopefully that uh, is going to be lower than uh, wages for an entire team mm -hmm. uh, to be constantly building those t things. And hopefully you're using the human mind for the innovation as opposed to you know putting together nuts and bolts and, and uh, that's right the human mind is free to solve problems which right. is what it does better when you try to uh, spend a long time doing something monotonous your mm -hmm. human mind wants to watch a movie. Right. <laughs> Does the, the speed of the print help you guys produce more panels? I mean, are you cranking these out all, all the time, 24-7? How does that, how does That's that right. go? That's Th right. That printer is always printing panels. Mm -hmm. um, we are printing them, you know, all day. Okay. Uh, so it takes a, a right now around eight hours to produce a panel. Okay. Uh, what we found is with certain design improvements, we can get that down. Uh, but you know you have to move across the move across the build plate uh, a lot, and mm -hmm. sometimes your speed is it becomes limited by the by the machine. Like we're talking about, like the belts, the steppers, those start to limit you. So at some point, you just need to increase the volume that you're extruding. Mm -hmm. You need to increase your flow rate, and uh, that's that's a good area where you you want to have a good heat break in your part so that you can pump a lot of heat into it and just shoot that filament through. Awesome you eventually decided you're going to build your own yes. right? To, to build these solar panels and get you the reliability. How has uh, the reliability aspect affected your production process? 
Well, I, f I found that before when we were using, you know, uh, the cheap Amazon or eBay uh, hot ends that, that we, were, we were sourcing in the 10 packs, uh, we were going through them uh, pretty often. You know, one would get gunked up, one would clog. We have a few printers that were down because it was clogged for some reason. Uh, but what I, I like about the what I like about the mosquito is that uh, it it's pretty resilient. Uh, that that nozzle, the vanadium nozzle, uh -huh. is uh, is pretty unstoppable. You know, mm -hmm. um, and so we don't have to change those nozzles. With the abrasive filaments, mm -hmm. uh, we'll go through a brass nozzle in a single print sometimes. Like the bottom of the print starts out really smooth and like it's working. As you get towards the top, you get a lot of under extrusion, and then you get. Uh, a mess. Right. Yeah. So even on one print, the brass nozzle just wears out with mm -hmm. the with the nylon X. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's a huge plus is is the vanadium, uh, and the the high temperature that we can get to. Uh, you you got to have those temperatures. We right. we get jams often when we can't reach the temperatures. We've mm -hmm. got certain printers that are. Uh, they're sort of capped at a 260, and the the nozzles start to the hot ends start to fall apart mm -hmm. when you when you exceed it. Right. Yeah. It's cool. Well, thank you for showing off some of the things you guys are working on. It's super exciting oh, yeah. to see the iterative process that you guys have gone through to get to where you are now. And I'm sure there's many innovations that you have coming up in the future as you continue to iterate and improve on your process. Oh so, yeah, and I thank you guys for thanks. really putting in that uh, human innovation into into the thermal design of these. Uh, hot ends and I'm excited to see the copperhead. Awesome, thank you.